What's up, everybody? We knew that you thought the hits were just going to keep coming in December, that it was just going to be this and that all throughout the month. But it is, listen, Rusty, this is the this is the stopper. This is Greg Maddox at the end of a three game losing streak right here, man. Carson Beck's coming back for the 2024 season, as we have told you was kind of the vibe for yep. the past two weeks. Yep. Yeah, and you know you had to be real careful with it because so many eyes and so much kind of in this decision, this, this got close to him playing on Sundays. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me, let me, let me, there was about a week there that maybe you and I both thought that this, this could end up, you know, Georgia could end up looking for a quarterback. Um, but you know, about the past, what, 10 days, I think we've been pretty consistent and everything we have heard, uh, we felt like he was lean on coming back and, and uh, as of yesterday, we felt really strong that uh, Carson yeah. Beck would come back at Georgia at some point. Yeah, and, and it was one of those things where I don't know if it was a whole week. I think it was more like a couple, two or three days. The portal yeah. makes things sound, feel like it's a little bit longer. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that Sunday after Georgia, um, you know, lost to Alabama in the SEC championship game, I mean, I tell you what, if you told me I had to have a bet in in the next 10 hours, um, I would have I put some good money on him leaving. But the yeah. longer it went, and you pointed this out several times, and I think it's very important to note, the longer it went and the more of their homework they did and the more they looked into it and checked on it and thought about it, um, the, the the better things got for Georgia here. And I want to ask you, I mean, just in a strictly opinion, why do you think that is? I'll drop something here, and I'll drop something on Dogs HQ. But I'll give you a little – snippet of what I know behind the scenes. You know what helped Georgia as much as anything with Carson Beck coming back? Their schedule. And he knows they're going to be in primetime games. You know, at Ole Miss, at Alabama, going to play Texas and Austin. Uh, they're going to open up with Clemson. And if you want to come back to increase your stock, if you want to come back and have a chance to win the Heisman, because he will be in the Heisman talk immediately now, if you want to come back and have a chance to win a national championship, get in a 12-team playoff, you're going to have big boy games. And you're going to have big boy games the minute the season starts, and it's really not going to stop for Georgia. That, you know, from looking 10,000 feet, whatever it is from the outside, I kind of thought maybe that's going to hurt him because he's going to think, hey, you know, I've got more opportunities to not help myself. But I was told by multiple sources that that helped. Georgia and the discussions with Carson Beck because he knew if he plays well in those games, that tape is invaluable to him. Not only that, but I mean, you know, Georgia was able to build depth on the offensive line throughout the season because of injuries. You know, he's going to have, That's a big you know, deal. probably, you know, probably three full time starters back from this coming season with, with, you know, Ernest Green at left tackle and, and Dylan Fairchild and, and Tate Ratledge and then Micah Morris got a lot of experience. Jared Wilson got some experience. That helped too. But Rusty, I think you hit the nail on the head there because what we're talking about here is, is now Carson Beck's got one of those 10.0 routines dialed up you know you watch the olympics and and you know sometimes they can perfect a routine like a gymnast can perfect a routine but it's only good for 9.5 that's all it's rated for georgia's schedule next year is rated for a 10.0 so if you go through that bad boy and get georgia they call it degree of difficulty yes the degree of difficulty exactly and it is a 10.0 in the degree of difficulty and uh and and listen you get georgia to the playoff and make a run out of that schedule man carson beck i mean he might start his own bank. He, I mean, it is, it, it's going to, it's, he's going to make a lot of money. And there's no doubt in my mind that, that, you know, the competitor in him wanted to get that clock rolling. He spent a lot of time in Athens already. I, I was just talking with Bill Shanks before this happened. That's atypical. He, that this is atypical of a quarterback. And George is very fortunate to have two guys of the skill level of Stetson Bennett and Carson Beck back to back willing to give five plus years to this program. Think about that. Carson Beck stayed what two years on the third year he lost a job okay he, he he was in the battle for it he didn't win it somebody didn't play well a couple of games he was gonna get the job didn't have a great week of practice against uav in fact the, the story is there one day with he'll he'll tell the story through a couple of interceptions and made the staff nervous and they went with stetson bennett and the rest was history he didn't leave jake he didn't leave he sat there for two years and did not leave gets a chance to start 
has a hell of a season, lost the SEC championship game by a field goal, uh, basically, against Alabama, and he's going to come back with a lot of pieces around him. But more importantly, Jake, I think you hit a point there. He's not coming back without those guys in front of him. And, and, and you know what I mean? He's going to lose Cedric Van Pran, but we've, we've talked about Jared Wilson a lot and how good he is and what they think about him. So, um, you, you know, he's not coming back without those guys up front. And and I know Tate Ratledge and, and Carson Beck are really close. So that, that, that deal with those two uh, probably means a lot that, that both of those guys seem to be, you know, we, we feel like Tate Ratledge has been, not been an official announcement, but on Dogs HQ, we feel like Tate Ratledge is going to come back. So, Michael Morris, Fairchild, you mentioned, Monroe Freeling, uh, the number one offensive lineman in the country last year for own three, coming out of high school, played a little bit. And you look at Ernest Green and, you know, playing left tackle and and whatever else they do, addition to, to the younger guys. So, uh, you know, there's just uh, – there's a lot in front of him, and that's not talking about skill players yet. Yeah, and, and Rusty, I, I keep thinking this. I've read a lot of it, personal Facebook, social media – you know, Georgia fans have been, uh, you know, they've been a little downtrodden about, you know, losing the first time in a long time. They're not used to that. Um, all the portal moves have gone against them thus far. You've watched some five stars, you know, maybe not consensus or, or industry ranking five stars, but guys have kind of moved away from the program. But listen, man, you can take every one of those guys that moved away and it's a fraction to me. And, and no offense to them. They're great players. And I've covered a lot of those dudes and they're great dudes. But when you talk about this position and the performance and how much it means to a team, it is a fraction of the boost Georgia got back today. Like you, Georgia was right here in terms of what it lost. And then it's, I mean, Beck is through the roof in terms of, I, I don't know that there's anything within reason without losing a whole position group at this point to the transfer portal or anywhere else that could match what Georgia got back in Carson Beck today. Also, second year, Mike Bobo's offense. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he lit it up in Bobo's offense this year. But if you give him a second season and he and Bobo, you know, you go through an offseason and, and kind of know exactly what he likes, what he what he wants to do. And, uh, you know, what if you're Mike Bobo, you get to see what Carson Beck does well when the bullets are flying, when it's live. And uh, he can work with that all offseason as well. So a second year in that is, is invaluable because in college football, you know, sometimes you don't get many of those. Uh, and you get a second chance with Carson Beck, a second year in that offense. And I tell you, one of the big things that I noticed this year and what helped Georgia so much in that gauntlet whenever they weren't very healthy, they were trying to get this guy back and they were trying to get that guy back, was the fact that you could tell that those two were coming together, that Beck and Bobo were coming together as far as the red zone. Georgia got so much better there. And listen, I know the SEC championship game didn't work out. Georgia didn't play well. They lost some guys. They, you know, Whatever. We can talk about the reasons all day long. They didn't get it done, but they're going to take another crack at it in a 12-team playoff with games at Texas, at Alabama, at Ole Miss, who is, you know, basically trying to, you know, have the free agent offseason of, of, of a century right now. Um, those are going to be massive games, and Georgia today is in massively better position than they would have been if Carson Beck didn't come back, and there's no other way to say it. Yeah, and, he, and if he doesn't come back, you know, if he didn't come back today, you know, there's a lot of kind of quarterbacks off the board. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like sitting here. Um, I think if I, I think Riley Leonard would have been a guy that Georgia won at, would have went after hard. I just really yeah. do. He ended up at, you know, Notre Dame. So, uh, but that was, you know, um, the job wasn't open and Carson Beck came back to Georgia. So all that is just, you know, spilt milk at this point. Nobody else is going to talk about it again. But uh, big deal, man, for, for Georgia today. I can't say it enough. And now, and now Georgia can get in that portal with those wide receivers and say, this is our dude. You see this and guy maybe a running here. back too. And a run it. Well, I, I think we think there's pretty good news on the running back front coming. Um, yeah. Th that running back room is going to look a little different uh, in spring practice and going against Clemson. And it starts on Wednesday uh, where they're going to sign three kids and they're going to sign the number one running back in the country, Nate Frazier, uh, who is, who is, oof. I mean, he's, he's different now. So we can talk about those things, but, I'm, I'm confident the running back room is going to look different next year for Georgia, bar anything crazy. Don't forget Branson Robinson. We expect him back at some point too. So there's a lot there. And uh, but 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 go to the wide receivers and we get those questions. You know who, who's Georgia going to get? And you know um, we have said on Dogs HQ that we feel like they're going to fill those kind of voids through the portal. And 
when you're when you got one year and you're a transfer wide receiver, you're not messing around. Like I need to know who's throwing. And you look at Ole Miss and what they've done in the last couple of days uh, with Jackson Dart coming back. So Georgia now is going to be able to look at these guys and say, "Hey, um, Carson Beck's here. Here's the tape. Or you don't have to. We don't have to sell it. You see these throws. This is the guy." And it's a busy week over at Dogs HQ. We got an early signing period coming up here on Wednesday. We're going to have you covered as far as that goes. Uh, content bark after dark tonight, nine o'clock. Uh, sorry, eight thirty p.m. Joe Winden National Preps, uh, one of the most knowledgeable guys in recruiting you'll ever talk to. And then we'll be back. Rusty and I'll be back with you tomorrow I gotta, morning. I got to ask Rusty chat at nine o'clock. Yeah, so, well, Rusty's got to ask Rusty chat tonight. And listen, price of admission. I'm in his cup before I do that one tonight. So one dollar one point. month over at Dogs HQ. My last one year. before my last one before uh, National Signing Day tonight at nine o'clock. So get all your chores done. That's what I'm doing. I got a little family thing to attend tonight. When I get done. <laughs> going up, coming upstairs, and might have some eye black on for this one. All right, that sounds good. We, we'll be back with you all week on this channel. Just keep it, keep us locked in, and uh, we'll be telling you everything we can possibly tell you. But uh, Carson Beck's coming back, so uh, go have a drink and enjoy it.